Okay, well, it is 1232, so I'm going to call our meeting to order if everybody could join me and say in the Pledge of Allegiance. Do you the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is roll call. So Michelle Gentine, Lisa Merrick, Karen Houston, Abby Block. Here. Michelle Warner. Nicole Bredesen. Michelle Warner here. Sorry, I was on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kate Hodges. Christine Potter. Gretchen Houston. Here. And Kevin Post. Here. And Mike Heim Heimbach said he was going to not be here today. Um, the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for September 30th, 2020? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, awesome. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item three, we have some items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is an update from the survey subcommittee on the creation and distribution of the community-wide survey to gather feedback on the current state of pet friendliness in Sheboygan, as well as how residents envision the future. Has everybody had some time to take a look at these? Michelle, do you want to talk about it since you are the awesome person that did all this work? Um, sure. You know, what I just tried to do was take a look at it in terms of what was the point first, what were the objectives of having the survey. And to me, it was really figuring out a gaps analysis of what exists in the city and people don't know about or what do people want that doesn't exist and try to identify those things so that we can combine that with our demographic information of what we do have and then figure out priorities from there. I think it's pretty tough to figure out where we want to focus on because we all come in with our own biases, right, of what we might think is most important. So I tried to take each section of the demographic information and just um, take what we had and what we didn't have and ask questions that were reflective of figuring out, again, that gap analysis. It's a little bit long because I just did the whole thing and figured we can edit if people feel it's too long. I don't know what's appropriate or not, um, but that was my approach for it. Does anybody have any feedback on the, um, the survey that we created? Chairman, I think we should just go through the questions uh, one at a time and then solicit some feedback as we go. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the first question, of course, is do you live in the city of Sheboygan? And the next question was, do you own a pet? If yes, please share what species, how many pets you have of each species. This would be an open answer. If you don't own a pet but would like to, why don't you own a pet? For example, are you not able to own a pet because you rent and pets are not allowed? Are you not able to own a pet because you work long hours and can't leave an animal at home? Uh, the next question is if you own your home or rent, and what would make Sheboygan a more pet-friendly city? Uh, so that's the section on demographics. Does anybody have any comments? Okay, so moving on to public parks, trails, and green spaces. Uh, we have, do you bring your pets to public parks, trails, and green spaces? Uh, yes there, or no? Are you aware? Uh, there, I think I'm we, sorry, we might uh, be able to use a resource in our, our uh, engineering department. They've created a GIS map. 
that shows all of those areas on a map. So if people aren't familiar with them, we don't have to list them, but we might want to put a link in there for them to access that. That is fantastic. Thank you. Um, then the uh, next question is, are you aware of dog parks available to you locally? And then we have, do you use either of the local dog parks? I guess the, the other, on, on that question, oh, uh, do you use either of the local dog parks? And I'm just wondering, you know, is it referring to the dog run on 18th Street or the beach at Lakeview Park? Um, or, or uh, you know, like the Humane Society is talking about putting a, a new dog park in in their uh, proposal. Uh, do we need to list those, or do you think that that this covers it? Um, I'll just pipe in some of the one who wrote it. I have no idea. I was surprised to see in the demographics that they listed more than one dog park because I I'm new to town. I didn't know about more than one, so I think it'd be a great idea to list them because I was not sure what they were referring to. Okay. We'll I agree that that would be a great idea to list the uh, names of the dog parks, maybe separate that out. Do you take your dog to, you know, and list each one? Or are you aware that the Humane Society is developing a dog park? Maybe we could find a question like that. That sounds good. Um, The next question is, are you more likely to use public off-leash areas or on-leash areas with your pet? And what are the three public parks or trails and green spaces you, move, you use most often? Um, and then what would you like to see changed about the laws or the accessibility of Sheboygan's public parks, trails, and green spaces when it comes to using them with your pet? I wonder if something like that, if we want to come up with some multiple choice uh, answers and maybe leave like an other for, you know, but to give people some ideas of what that might even encompass. <clears throat> Sorry, hopefully you can hear me this time. That's a really good idea. <laughs> that is a great idea. Does anybody else have feedback? I guess I'd say for kind of the multiple choice there, uh, like giving the options, because they may think that our current laws are uh, applicable, mm -hmm. uh, maybe give the option of like, how do you feel are our current laws? Like A, uh, they're good enough, B, we need to be more pet friendly, <laughs> C, they need to be more strict, uh, just kind of getting a general understanding. And then there could be like a follow-up question, like if you wanted it this way, how would, or if you want like more open laws, what are your suggestions or something like that? That way we have a better sense of where everyone else is as well. Right, because I know we are gonna get some that say they need to be more restrictive, I think, than, and not, not everybody I think is going to say like, oh yeah, let's just open everything up or let's, some, somewhere on that spectrum. But um, yeah, I think giving options helps bring it into focus a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Well, thank you. Those are very helpful. Um, the next section would be pet friendly businesses. Are you able to find businesses in Sheboygan that cater to your needs as a pet owner? For example, veterinary services, boarding services, daycare services, <coughs> pet food supplies, et cetera. And then we have what services are you not able to find in Sheboygan as it relates to your needs as a pet owner? Um, that one is an open answer. Um, they can fill in the blanks. And then we have our pet-friendly businesses like restaurants that allow pets to join you for outdoor dining, stores that allow you to bring your pet inside, hotels that allow pets, et cetera, important to you. If pet-friendly businesses are important to you, do you think Sheboygan businesses do a good job of being pet-friendly? And if pet-friendly businesses are important to you, what is an example of something you'd like to do with your pet that you're unable to do? I wonder in that question if we could just uh, leave off the if pet-friendly businesses are important to you and just make it what is an example of something you'd like to do with your pet that you're unable to? 
Well, and I don't know about for the, you know, are they important? Could it be something like very important, someone important, you know, don't really care either way, um, or not at all important or something like that, just to make it a little bit more standardized when we're putting the results together to say, you know, this percentage of people said it's really important to them to have this particular thing here in the city. That's a fantastic idea. That would probably make it much easier because otherwise you're giving people too many options if they have their own choices to make with that answer. So we'll, we'll have to work on some of these things and then bring it back for review again. Um, the next section we had was pet-friendly workspaces. Does your workplace allow you to bring pets to work? If you're allowed to bring pets to work, have you chosen to do so? Would you value being able to bring your pet to work? If you would be able to, if you would value being able to bring your pet to work, why would you value that? For example, it would cut down on your pet separation anxiety, make it easier for you to have a pet. On the first three questions, I'd like to see us consider adding uh, an option for I don't know, because some people may or may not even, you know, be looking at, at that. Um, but obviously we would want to identify the ones that do and, and don't. Okay, we can do that then. Thank you. Uh, the next section that we have is shelters. If you have a pet, did you adopt it from a shelter? Um, the next one is, have you wanted to adopt a pet from a shelter but were unable to? And if you wanted to adopt a pet from a shelter but were unable to, why? Now there, you know, we, we kind of put shelters in, in one group, but there are fostering uh, groups, um, you know, and things like that. So I don't know if we can do something to maybe uh, expand the, the title there. And then... Um, this kind of acts, asks only what your present tense is, but I think we should also maybe uh, uh, allow people who, who maybe did this years ago or, you know, who, who did something in the past reply to it too. I don't know if we want to capture anything around like uh, other programming. So even if you haven't necessarily adopted a pet to do, um, you know, call for the trap stay and neuter program or something like that, I think just to get a sense of, Maybe those people that utilize the Humane Society or the other rescues, but don't necessarily have a pet from there. But I don't know how to write that, Michelle, sorry. Yeah. Okay, we can work on those later then. In the next section is family support. Have you ever needed financial or other help to afford your pets? Do you know that support is available to pet owners to help you afford your pet? Do you foresee needing support to help keep your pet in your home? And what kind of support would be most useful to you as a pet owner? For example, emergency food, lodging, or vet assistance. Does anybody have any feedback on those? Not to be redundant, but maybe the multiple choice options for the last you know, you already listed them, Michelle, maybe just listing those out and leaving like a room for another. If there's somewhere that, something that's not on that list. That makes sense. And then the last section we had was pet friendly housing and community amenities. Do you feel your housing options are limited if you rent and own a pet? If you rent, are you able to have a pet? If you rent and are able to have a pet, do you feel like the additional fees you pay are reasonable? If you rent and own a pet, what would be the most useful thing that could be available to you? Size, species, breed, flexibility, lower fees, amenities like green space, et cetera. So I think multiple choice on that one also, maybe, Abby? Um, I mean, that would be my inclination, I guess, but... Like I said, always leaving an other so that people are able to write in if there's things that we haven't thought of or um, that aren't included. Um, can I say something? Yeah. Um, also, Push your uh, button. oh, am I not on? Oh, oh thank you. Um, the, do you feel your housing options are limited if you rent and own a pet? Um, 
this might this is, doesn't include people that are in a condo uh, that feel like their options are also limited in terms of you know breed flexibility and and you know whether or not their condo is even pet friendly or not. So I don't know if there could be something in here or if we could combine the rent and own a condo um, in one question or create a separate question? Well, I think the last three questions are, fall into that category. So maybe we could put a little precursor up there. Uh, you know, if you own your own home, you're done with the survey. And uh, <laughs> if you uh, rent or are in a condo, uh, then please answer these last three questions. Mm -hmm. Well, with those, okay, and that with those, is the end of it. yeah, with those adjustments, uh, I think uh, we can work to put this into uh, one of the online survey um, mediums, and uh, whether it's Survey Monkey or something like that, and then we'll uh, be able to do kind of like a test with the group, and then maybe maybe make our final refinements, and then uh, look at uh, uh, putting this out to the community after that. Do we have a sense of timeline? Yeah, like, thank you so much. Sorry, like when we want it to be actually out to the community? Do we have a sense of timing on that or not really? Well, as far as the timeline, I think, you know, we, we, we should proceed, you know, to do this as soon as possible, but there's no real crunch as to when it needs to be done. Okay. So, you know, I think sometime over the winter here, we'll, we'll definitely allow probably at least uh, several weeks to a month, uh, something like that time frame. Uh, the other thing we might want to do is uh, see if we can find uh, some kind of a, a maybe a, a supportive business that might want to put a prize out there. Sometimes that helps to in incentivize people to, uh, to participate. Does anybody else have any comments about the survey? Would having this available through different veterinarians in uh, veterinarian offices uh, in Sheboygan, uh, is that a possibility of, of getting this out to more people? Well, the, the thing is, is um, if we uh, do something that's a paper survey, then we'll have to spend some time putting that into the survey, you know, uh, to take care of it. But if it's just a, a, a computer survey, people will take it, you just get the results, it's a little bit easier. So we'll have to investigate, you know, that option. Okay. Maybe we could put, you know, like a small card in them and just promote the idea of taking it and then and put the link to that on the card so it would be very simple for them to get on their computer and take it rather than printing a paper survey. And the, uh, the incentive, some kind of incentive, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. would be great. Yep. Okay. With that, I okay, think we well, can go on to the next. Anybody else have comments? We can go on to the next item right, then. Going on to item 3.2 is the update from the online assessment subcommittee regarding the Better Cities online assessment and information on the proposed Dogtober Fest event. I'll let Joe speak to the event and where that's at. Obviously, it's not happening October 24th. Um, here, okay. You want me to talk about the Dogtoberfest? Sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah. From the result, from la the last meeting, we talked that you know it was getting kind of late, and there was going to be another um, humane society um, event going on, and uh, we decided afterwards that you know instead of really trying to push and change um, um, change an ordinance to get permission, that we would uh, work towards next year, and I believe um, the event was. Oh, I know it was. It was moved to. A, um, uh, I can't remember the name, a local bar that has outside and a, a big back room. So the event still went on, but it was just at a different location. Oh. Joe, it's still happening this Thank year? Thank you so much for that update. Oh, sorry. It's still happening this year, Joe, at a different location? It already happened, yes. This oh, year. okay. 
So, uh, I think uh, a week before what we had planned. Okay. Jill, where are we with the online assessment? Uh, is that ready for submission? I'd have to refer that to Abby. Sure. Uh, so we did include uh, the assessment in last month's uh, agenda. And there, you know, there are some things that are subjective. There are some things that some answers from the community survey, especially around uh, businesses and what workplaces allow pets would be helpful uh, for submission. But um, I guess that's up to the committee if we feel like we want to wait or if we want to get it off and let them know. I was in contact with one of the people from uh, Mars for the Better Cities. They're having some issues with uh, submission. So even though I hadn't submitted, it appeared that it had. Um, so I think we could submit if we wanted to and later update that with information. But um, I guess that's really for the committee to decide if we feel like it's ready. Yeah, I, I would ag agree with the idea of, of submitting what we have and, and then we can update it when we get our survey done. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much for that update and all that information and your hard work on that particular project. Um, item 3.3 .3 is a discussion on the process and timeline for reviewing the city's current pet ordinances and how this information will be used to further the work of the task group. Does anybody want to speak on that particular item? So I, I have been trying to review other cities and their pet ordinances. Um, I know I would like to personally just sit down and, and, and put some things together. My thoughts on, on, you know, what we could possibly do as far as um, what we could do different maybe in the parks. So um, I'd like to work towards that. And, and if a, a few other people wanted to, to work on that also, or, or the same committee that we had, uh, we could uh, we could work on that. Joe, as a, a point of information, the city attorney has advised me that if we have a subcommittee, they still have to uh, meet virtually like this, so that's an open meeting to the the community. So you know, if you do something on your own and bring it back uh, to present to the larger group here, that'd be fine. But if we do have subcommittee meetings in the future, we'll have to uh, you know have them hosted here and and uh, and do it just like uh, the meeting we're currently in right now. I propose that we just kind of all look at it ourselves then and and uh, and kind of go through it at one of these meetings, whether it's the next one or or. A couple months from now, or maybe you could break it up and and uh, you know we there's several sections in our ordinance book that deal with pets and animals and maybe we could you know cover uh, one section at one meeting one at another. All righty, it sounds like we're getting some plans together for that one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your input um, about the city attorney's office. And item 3.4 is other discussion or comments from those on the committee or members of the public. Does anybody have anything to say? Well, I'd like to thank Michelle for all the work she did on the survey. We really appreciate you grabbing hold and, uh, and uh, giving us some great uh, uh, skeleton of something to work with here. So I pat on the back. Good job. Agreed. Yeah, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Okay, well, then moving on to 4.1, our next meeting date is November 25th. And since we have exhausted our agenda, I would like to look for a motion to adjourn. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor of adjournment, please uh, say aye. 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 aye.
share about time. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for your time today, and we'll see you guys next month. Thank you.